Welcome to Shakespeare Full Circle, a journey of a circuitous nature into the mind of the Bard of Avon, or as you become more familiar, Uncle Will. I'm your host, Kari Marshall. Thank you for joining us. I know there are literally millions of things you could be doing at this very moment. Billions, even. You are only constrained by your imagination, funds, and legality. One could say that the world is your oyster. That phrase, or idiom, really, has come to embody the multitude of possibilities available to us, from work and career to romance and travel. But it is most often heard by the 18-year-old who is being urged out the door on their way to college, or on a Friday night amongst a group of friends about to hit the town with no discernible plan of attack. Fitting, really, as Shakespeare penned those words that would end up being spoken in a tavern. They come up in The Merry Wives of Windsor, which was rumored to be written at the behest of Queen Elizabeth sometime between 1597 and 1602. The fable goes that following her attendance at his play Henry IV Part II, she wanted a light-hearted play that followed the amorous exploits of the character John Falstaff. There is no historical evidence for this claim, but it does make the rounds in various theater dressing and green rooms. What is uncontested, however, is that the play centers around the shenanigans of Sir John Falstaff. Our rotund gourmand is setting out to trick two married ladies, behind their husband's back, of course, into giving him money, no doubt for food, drink, and merriment. Act 2, Scene 2 begins with the entrance of Falstaff, followed by his drinking mate, Pistol, who has been begging him to lend him some money. I will not lend thee a penny rather than the world's my oyster, which I with sword will open. Not a penny! I have been content, sir! What's interesting here is that there's a distinct and very dark threat underneath those words. But before we get into that, it might be helpful to know what was going on in the world in the late 16th century. For starters, there was the Anglo-Spanish War, which, by the way, was never formally declared. It centered around what we will loosely call expeditions by the British fleet to gather treasure from the Netherlands, or, more accurately at the time, the Spanish Netherlands, which does bring to mind an odd conglomeration of clogs and tapas, but we digress. Plundered booty was a mainstay of the Elizabethan Empire at the time, provided by numerous explorers, most notably Sir Walter Raleigh, who provided the Queen with many exotic and rare treasures, including pearls. He was, as you may recall from history class, also one of the leading players in the colonization of North America. But this may have been where Uncle William found his inspiration for his reference. What Pistol is saying is not that since you are refusing me, the world's opportunities are now open to me. He is saying, if you don't supply me with money, there is a wide world to range with plenty of purses, and I will take it, by violence if need be. A bit darker than it has now become known in our modern vernacular. The term obviously now has a hopeful, if not positive, connotation for us. But there is an underlying current that lies beneath this phrase of a very Pistolian flavor. All the possibilities of the world are available to you, but not unconditionally. They require one of four things, money, power, the goodwill of a patron, or plain and simple hard work. You can buy possibilities, you can be gifted them, or you can work to earn them, but they are not free. And for those whose waters contain far more oysters than most of the shore-bound masses, it's important to remember that if you were born on third base, you didn't hit a triple. But what Uncle William would no doubt agree is better in our modern times is that it is now unnecessary to take a slow and smelly walk through the streets of his second home, London, to avail himself of all the riches of that great city. He can just jump on the tube. The next station is Westminster. And zip to any of its 272 stations for cultural treasures or exploits of a less highbrow nature. Is it any wonder that the contactless payment method is called an oyster card? Well, alas and alack, my friends, that's all we have time for. Join us again next time for another circuitous journey into the mind of Uncle William. I'm Kari Marshall. Farewell until next time. Shakespeare Full Circle is a production of WGTE Public Media. You can learn more and download all episodes at wgte.org slash sfc or wherever you get your podcasts.